In the name of God, the Creator, Sustainer and Redeemer. Amen. A very warm welcome to you this morning uh, to St John's Church. It's a beautiful morning outside and uh, it's beautiful inside, filled with beautiful people. Um, if you're joining us online, it's also really good to have you with us too. Let us um, find ourselves in this place of worship, delighting and celebrating together in the wonder and gift of life. As we sing our first hymn, All Creatures of Our God, number six, we'll sing the first three verses and then the last verse. Otherwise, we could be here all day long. of God hovered over the water and brought life to all creation. Come Holy Spirit and renew the face of the earth. Please do sit down and as I said a very warm welcome to you if you're visiting us for the first time or not in a while it's very good to see you here. It's a beautiful day as I've said all of nature is singing a song of praise and we are caught up in that anthem that hymn of the universe. So as we find ourselves as a small part of the whole of creation, let us turn our minds and thoughts inwards and reflect on where we are. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, 
and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God's whole creation grows. The land produces thorns and thistle and longs to be set free. Our sin affects all around us. We confess our brokenness in penitence and faith. Creator God, we confess that we have not honoured and followed you. We have broken our relationships with one another, abused your fragile creation, wounded your love, and marred your holy image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. Father, forgive us. Lead us from apathy to love. Strengthen us as stewards of your precious people and of your glorious creation. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Amen. May our loving God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. who in generous mercy sent the Holy Spirit upon your church in the burning fire of your love. Grant that your people may be fervent in the fellowship of the gospel that, always abiding in you, they may be found steadfast in faith and active in service. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please do sit for our first reading. The first reading is taken from Amos, chapter 6, verses 1 and then 4 to 7. Alas for those who are at ease in Zion, and for those who feel secure on Mount Samaria, the notables of the first of the nations, and whom the house of Israel resorts. Alas for those who lie on beds of ivory, and lounge on their couches, and eat lambs from the flock, and calves from the stall, who sing idle songs to the sound of the harp, <clears throat> and like David, improvise on instruments of music, who drink wine from bowls and anoint themselves with the finest oils, but are not grieved over the ruin of Joseph. Therefore, they shall now be the first to go into exile, 
and the revelry of the loungers shall pass away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you. Jesus told them this parable to those among the Pharisees who loved money. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, longed to satisfy his hunger. With what fell from the rich man's table, even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father, Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner received evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us is a great chasm that has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can come from there to us. The man who had been rich said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they may also come not into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. But he said, Father, no, Father Abraham, if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. Abraham said to him, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither they will, will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Uh, please do sit down. Um, a theologian and activist uh, who I really admire, a guy called Jim Wallace, uh, many, many years ago, decided to do an experiment with the Bible, and uh, him and his colleagues, they were in seminary at the time, uh, cut out in a, with a pair of scissors every reference to the poor. And when they did, they discovered that the Bible was in total tatters. In fact, the Hebrew Testament was almost in threats. There was hardly anything left of it at all, because the Hebrew Testament particularly is full of, I think the approximate figure is something like one in six lines or verses, is to do with care for the poor and the needy. So this speaks to an imagination and a mindset that uh, was very live for the people of this time. Remember, of course, that Jesus is speaking to people who lived in chronic malnutrition and yet were surrounded by some rich rulers and leaders and, in fact, the religious leaders as well. We're told, even at the beginning of that, who loved money. Things haven't really changed, have they? We live in a very similar time. Historically speaking as well, it's worth noticing that in Pompeii, as, uh, const as you know, further investigations, archaeological investigations take place, you can actually see benches outside of lavish houses. When you dig those up, there are uh, remnants of benches. This was a known activity 
that the poor would sit on benches outside waiting for scraps to be given. If someone held a feast, small morsels would be given out. And it was an act of kind of honour and duty and responsibility for the rich of their day to give at least something to the poor and to the needy. And so in this story as well, we hear this one rich ruler who didn't give anything at all, who neglected entirely the needs of the poor. And then Jesus takes us into a parable to explain or show the consequences of that, what that means for someone's life. It's a parable. It's not actually an illustration of the afterlife, and it's worth noting that because some people try and draw big theologies out of that, but it's not true. But it's a parable which shows this deep division and the consequences of that. But Jesus, of course, always inverts our expectations, turns things on their head, and plays so that we can see some subtle details as well. Lazarus has a name. It means God has helped. It's where we get Elazar from, or Elazar is actually the root, and Lazarus is the common usage. God has helped. The rich man doesn't have a name. Straight away, we hear something of God's interest and bias towards those who are downtrodden, who are put on the outside, who are marginalised, and there are so many ways. We still see people marginalised today, people who are poor in all sorts of ways. And God knows them and names them, sees them and hears them. So that inversion begins... And there's an irony and a satire in this as well, because Jesus wants to point out that that ingrained sense of privilege and power doesn't end even in the afterlife. I wonder what the listeners must have thought when they heard uh, that the rich man, still in Hades, asks for Lazarus to be a servant still. Could you send him so that he can do these things? Could he bring me some water? Could he go and speak to my, my brothers? I wonder if those listening would have just laughed wryly, thinking, yeah, typical. <laughs> typical. An abuse of power still in that situation. The point is pretty clear. And it's a stark warning then. And to be honest, it's a stark warning now. If they do not hear the prophets then what will they hear? If they do not hear the prophets, what will they hear? Because the prophets, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Amos, who we've just heard as well, all the prophets would be speaking warnings to the arrogance and pomposity of Israel. And often the arrogance and pomposity that came when they felt that they had God on their side. The prophets would say, but... If you carry on abusing the poor and exploiting the earth and misusing your position, then these terrible things will take place. But the prophets didn't only wag their fingers and tell people off. They also energized a sense of hope because there's a rhythm to the way the prophets would speak. They would say, if you don't stop doing this, these terrible things will happen. But if you do, if you care for the poor, if you care for the marginalized, if you care for the creation around you, then there will be life and everyone will be able to share life and we'll be able to live in harmony with one another. And the prophets, if you read them, will always have this rhythm of critique, which is going downhill, and then energizing hope, which takes us uphill. And that's the situation we still live in today. This has been a really interesting week. We've seen a budget in all but name where it seems from everyone's perspective that the very richest of society get off the best. And yet the same week we had 80 uh, activists, people working in charities, people working in food banks, people working with the homeless, faith leaders as well here, talking about the situations they're finding in West Berkshire and they are heartbreaking and devastating. These are not people that would be classically called poor. These are people like nurses, key workers, teachers. Still have that same division, it seems. 
And yet the prophets then and the prophets now call us to rethink and reset our priorities. We're in creation season and we can very easily extend our view of the poor to creation itself and see the same dynamics at play, an exploitation of the earth, an abuse of the forests, dereliction of our duty to the seas and the oceans. And we can see looming right ahead of us the consequences of such actions. And the prophets are still calling us. And the word still retains, remains, if we will not listen to the words of the prophets. So we're all called to take some responsibility, as much as we can, but also we are called and we hope and we campaign and we pray that those who can make big decisions, big political decisions, can do the same. Maybe all of us are called to a question of will. and How much do we desire for a future for our children and grandchildren to grow up in? This is also Stewardship Sunday. And for me, this sort of fits in. Stewardship Sunday often can feel awkward because it can feel like it's, can we have some more money, please? It's a time when once a year the church does simply ask us to all think about the things that we can give and do. And some of that, of course, is financial, but also there are the gifts that we have to work for our community, to improve the life of this church. There's the prayers, there's the passion, there's the welcomers, there's those who make teas and coffees who draw us all in. And this Sunday, we ask everyone if everyone can think about the things that they can give of time and care and love and passion. And there's opportunities. We have a volunteer board at the back of the church. We have a sign-up sheet if anyone would like to do that. Think how we can be part of the picture, maybe innovators and new ideas as well, for what we can do as a church to serve our community here all around us in South Newbury. So please do think about those things. Do consider what you can give and whether there is any ways that you can improve um, or enrich, enrich the life of our community. The thing about faith and discipleship, of course, that's also important to say is it's not black and white. Despite those stark divides we see in that parable, it never is. It's actually simply an invitation to live as best we can. And to recognise, as we've done in our confession, that we also get things wrong, all of us, each and every one of us. But maybe the best reminder of our humanity is this natural season, this season of autumn, this creation season too. The rebirth is always on the agenda. As things fall to the ground, so new things emerge. Nature adapts, seasons change, and the force for life continues. So let us all think and respond. How do we listen to the prophets of today? How do we do our small part, maybe our large part, to find ways to work in harmony with nature's desire for life, to work in harmony with our community around us, to work with our neighbours, to enrich the cause of life, and to find that desire for life with God's passion for life as we work together for our future, for our children, our grandchildren, and the generations beyond. Amen. I invite you to join with me as we stand and say the words of the creed together. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is made. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
Please do take a seat as we pray for the church, for the world, for our neighbours and for ourselves. And our petition is Lord of all creation. And our response, hear the cry of our hearts. On this beautiful day, we are reminded of the goodness and richness and diversity of all creation. The deep gifts of this planet and the gift and gratitude we have for our lives here. May our prayers be inspired and enriched by that call to life and the call of the prophets. Lord of all creation, hear the cry of our hearts. We pray for all faith and wisdom traditions. We pray for your church that we would nurture and foster within all people that sense of awe, sense of wonder and of reverence, a sense of compassion and kindness. Help us to walk lightly upon this planet and to be mindful of our neighbours and those in need. Help us to develop a spirituality of gratitude. Lord of all creation, hear the cry of our hearts. We pray for the beauty and the fragile beauty of this earth. The exploited oceans, the exploited forests. We pray for all who are exploited and oppressed and abused throughout the world. We pray especially for the situation in Ukraine. We pray for the hand of military might to cease and for peace and for understanding to develop. We pray for the situation in Pakistan, still, still deeply affected by the flooding. And we pray for our sisters in Iran, risking their lives in a cry for freedom. Lord of all creation, hear the cry of our hearts. We pray for those within our own neighborhood and benefits who are struggling this day. We pray for those many agencies who gathered together this week, those who try to bring peace and help to the most vulnerable in our society. Lord of all creation, hear the cry of our hearts. We pray for those who have asked our prayers, we pray for Anna and for Alana, for George and for Tony. We pray for those who have recently died, for Mary Brindley, for Louise Funnell, for Janet Palmer, for June Green, for Reverend Marjorie Warnes, for Noah Hall. And we pray for those to be baptised this Sunday, for Robin Brown at St George's and for Edward Cornwall at St John's. Lord of all creation, hear the cry of our hearts. And finally, we pray for ourselves and for those we hold most dear to our hearts. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to stand with me as we share the peace with one another. You shall go out in joy and be led back in peace, and the mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song. The trees of the field shall clap their hands. Peace of the Lord be always with you.
Let us offer one another a sign of our peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. As the grain once scattered in the fields and the grains once dispersed on the hillside are now reunited on this table in bread and wine, so Lord may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise for your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. He is the image of the unseen God, the firstborn of all creation. He created all things in heaven and on earth, everything visible and everything invisible. Thrones, dominions, sovereignties, powers, all things were created through him and for him. Lord of all creation, we worship and adore. He is the radiant light of your glory. He holds all creation together by his word of power. Lord of all creation. We worship and adore you. He is the first to be born from the dead. All perfection is found in him. All things are reconciled through him and for him. Everything in heaven and everything on earth. When he made peace by his death on the cross. Lord of all creation. We worship and adore you. Church is his body. He is his head. He takes his place in heaven at your right hand, where we worship you with all of creation singing.
praise you and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. Who on the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in the whole earth. Look with favour upon your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Mary, the Mother of God, St. George, St. John and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray in confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from us. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We are, we are one body because we will share. God's holy gifts to God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is holy. To the glory of God.
Namaste. Welcome, St. John's, to St. John's Church here in Newbury, the one that you should have been here today, but uh, COVID happens, doesn't it? So you can't always guarantee these things. So instead, we're bringing the church to you in school. I uh, hope you're having a good final week of this term. I hope you're doing creative and exciting things, getting ready for the holiday. And also, I'm imagining thinking a little bit about the Easter story as well. And so for our final assembly of this term, I would share some of that Easter story with you and hope that for you it's a special message about hope.
Keep, O oh Lord, your church with your perpetual mercy. Because without you our human frailty cannot but fail. Keep us ever by your help from all things hurtful. And lead us to all things profitable to our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray together. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, creator of light and giver of life. To you be glory and praise forever. In Jesus your light has shone out, and you have given your Holy Spirit as a mighty stream of life-giving water to refresh and renew the face of the earth. Let your light shine in us, that we may be beacons of justice and bearers of hope. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God. As our service draws to an end, I've got a few notices to give out. Um, first of all, it's creation season. I don't think many people have actually seen the new frontal, which we have for creation season. Um, Melanie and Julie, Reverend Julie, conspired together to create this new uh, piece for the, for the front of the church. Uh, and it's very clever because it can also break down into banners as well. So, Melanie, thank you very much. I know you don't want attention drawn to yourself, but, but there's a little bit of attention drawn to you anyway. Um, thank you very much for that. Do go and have a look at it. There's all sorts of things going on in that Serafina and Sebastian. So have a look and see what you can see um, later on, maybe. Uh, tonight, uh, at Enborn Church, uh, there is a... Harvest Festival Even Song. Everyone is welcomed. As you know, we're sort of having conversations with the Church St. Michael's and All Angels at Embourne, uh, joining our work together. And so please do go along to that. Everyone is welcome. Six o'clock in the evening, but preceded, if you wish, at five o'clock with a tour of the All Angels Vineyard. So do come along if you wish to that. That would be very nice. Um, if anyone feels that they need a lift, maybe have a word with me um, on the way. So, so there's that. Next week it's Harvest Festival. Uh, what could possibly go wrong? It's an all-age service. Um, it will be loads of fun. Please do come. Invite any families that you know, and lots of people will be welcome. We're obviously asking for donations to food. Those charities I spoke of earlier on. Um, that we met during the week, the food bank particularly and the soup kitchen and loose ends are really struggling with donations inevitably at the minute. Everyone's squeezed and everyone's pressed. So whatever people can do, please do. Uh, as I said as well about stewarding, it is a time in the church where we ask people to rethink about uh, financial contributions as well as all the other ways that we steward and we offer the gifts that we've received into the church. Um, if you want more help with financial giving, David is here to give some ideas, and also Kim, who's our treasurer, waving at the back at the moment. Everyone wave to Kim. Um, Kim uh, will give ideas uh, how we can best utilise the financial giving to this church. Um, on the same note, there's also a volunteering poster, which you'll see over there, and there's a sign-up sheet as well. So now we're after people's names if they would like to volunteer. So it all sounds a bit heavy, but it's not really. It's all done with a smile. A cheeky little smile. <laughs> Don't laugh at that. Um, and so there we are. Oh, um, the other thing to say is if anyone spotted some typos on the email this week, it's because I was wrestling with a sinus infection. That's my, that's my mitigation. That's my story that I'm sticking with. My head was like glue. And uh, <laughs> a number of people pointed out one or two errors and omissions. If there was any talk of heffalumps and woozles, then that's entirely down to Benelin as well. So, um, yeah, sorry about that. Do better next week. Um, and finally, the invitation for everyone to join us next door in the parish room for teas and coffees at the end of the service. Uh, please do, do join us for that and make yourself known. It would be lovely to see you and say hello. 
So we are done. Um, thank you to the choir. You sounded magnificent. That anthem was beautiful. So much appreciated. Shall we sing a final song? Final hymn, number 573, Praise to the Lord. God who clothes the lilies and feeds the birds of the air, who leads the lambs to pasture and the deer to water, who multiplied loaves and fishes and changed water into wine, lead us, feed us, multiply us and change us to reflect the glory of our Creator now and through all eternity. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you those you love this day and evermore. Amen. Amen. I call heaven and earth to witness today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him and holding fast to him. Go in the light and peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.